Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Check out, out that cool music just started playing just as I started up the replay. So, well, started up the recording of the replay anyway. So, going to be absolutely awesome. Another Daily Master. So, let's check out the players. Is again from a Dreamhack Winter. Up the top right side of the map, we do have Polt. Of course, oh, excuse me. Polt is a... Uh, from South Korea. I don't know why, but I always think Polt is from Europe. I just look at his name and I'm like, yeah, he's European. I think I keep getting him confused with Snoot, who I believe is European. Yes, off the top of my head is. I'll have to double check that because I am notoriously bad at remembering any fact, no matter how easy you may think it's to remember. I it just, I, I think I remember it and then, yeah, just bad things happen. So anyway, Snoot is, uh, Yes, he is indeed from Europe. So anyway, <laughs> enough of that. So yes, we do have Polt. It's from South Korea. Playing for Terran. Playing Terran for the uh, CM Storm team. And his WCS rank is quite scary. Five and a half thousand points. So very, very, very nice stuff there. And his opponent is, of course, going to be Life Down the bottom left side of the map. Also from South Korea. Playing in the Star Tail team. And with 2,000 points in the WCS, he is not somebody to uh, to be taken lightly, to be taken non-seriously. So yes, we're going to be looking at a hatch before pull going down here, as well as a nice bit of gas tech going on there. And as far as Pulse going, he's going fairly standard. Supply Depot into barracks. Come on, anybody can do that. Where's the fancy play at the two and a half minute mark? I want to see double command center before barracks from these pro players, man, because it would make for so much more entertaining viewership, but right now, of course, everything is standard, nothing crazy is happening, and it looks like it's going to be a nice long game, which of course you guys already know because you can see how long the video is. So yeah, I, I, I can't hide anything from you guys, not at all. I can't even hide the fact that I barely know what I'm talking about when I'm casting these games, because it's so obvious so anyway we've got the reaper coming out and here is an excellent opportunity to get the follow camera mode on the question is are the overlords going to see it i think that overlord may have seen it already the one over there oh i've lost my follow camera uh, i wonder if i click over here yes it does bounce back over there but it doesn't zoom over there it just sort of teleports the the screen teleports i'm not sure if it should be able to do that i reckon it should just have to go the long way but whatever so anyway we do have the Reaper coming down now, coming up to the top side of the map. No Queen as of yet, the uh, defending Lings are only just coming out now. So once again, both players, perfect timing. And the Queens are actually, I, I don't know, they, usually they'd be a little bit closer than this, but no. They've uh, still got quite a bit of distance left. One Ling is going to go down, a couple of drones at fairly low health, but one of them could go down. No, puts it into a small crawler right there. Probably going to cancel that out, there we go. and. We do have a second Reaper though, but I'm not sure it matters because the Queens are up in this battle and the Reapers just don't have much of a hope anymore. They really, really don't. So they're going to be backing off. We do have an expansion coming down for Polt. We also have a factory coming down as well as a reactor. So he's going into the fast Hellion tech. And, hmm, yes, yeah, so life almost certainly has got to be thinking about, um, thinking about going for a third base sometime soon. But look at this man, Polt actually got a ton of minerals waiting right there. He's obviously saving up, he's got to save up for the Orbital Command, he's got to save up for the Starport, where's this Starport? Over there. He's got to save up for a bunch of other stuff, double Hellions as well, so all that stuff needs to save up for, and that is why he had like five bajillion minerals. And I thought he was going for a third base, but no, he had to save up for all that stuff, so it's not easy being a Terran player, man. It costs a lot. But here we go, third base coming down for life. Probably a little bit more delayed than he would have liked, thanks for those Reapers, but he's still going to be in quite a good position. Bunch of Lings coming out. They've got the Watchtower, but they cannot quite see the Terran base from over there. Some of them are probably trying to look, but it's just not happening. So here we go, two Hellions coming out. I think there's two more, plus a Banshee. So uh, all, of the, uh, all of the harassment units coming out for Polt. And we're going to see... Oh, the buildings are disappearing. Damn it, I hate you, Gameheart. I really, really do. Here we go. The Hellion is just having a bit of a scout. Managing to kill a creep tumor. That's not a bad job there. So, beautiful stuff. Just going to be chased away. Meanwhile, the Link's coming in. There's a big gap in the wall. 
There's a big gap in this wall as well. They're going straight for the tech lab. Currently researching Cloak for the Banshees. Oh, this is bad. And down it goes. So no more Cloak for the Banshees. That is not, not very good. For, uh, not very good for Polt at all. And I tell you what, man. Great thinking on life's part. Didn't go for the workers. Went for the went for the straight for the tech lab. He's gonna rebuild it right now, but that banshee is not gonna have cloak for the longest time. Where is the damn thing anyway? It's over there. So this guy is gonna be wide out in the open and life building up a couple of extra queens, or at least one extra queen. Because I do believe a banshee 1v1 against a queen may the, the queen may get owned. And that would not be good, so. Here we go, main guys thinking about going in, thinking about trying to move past, or maybe even killing a queen. With that many hellions, you definitely can do it. The banshee going around the long way. Or is it going to get spotted by the overlord over here? Uh, these buttons aren't doing anything anymore. You. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right, because I'm, I'm not focusing on the players, I'm focusing on something else. Whatever, because there's so many observers in this game. There we go, queen looking like it's going to take the plunge right here. And it can maybe run over there, try and get healed by its friend. Oh no, there's no healing coming from this guy. Maybe it cost 50 energy or something, didn't quite have enough, but... Regardless, one queen goes does go down. But this other queen, I think it's got enough health to survive. And the Hellions so far, man, they're just not taking out these queens at all. The creep is continuing to spread. And it's going to be bad news for all of those guys. We do have, uh, looks like there's been some swapping done over here. So we haven't gone for cloaking on the bench. He's probably decided it's a bit too late for that. And decided to just go for some other stuff uh, in the meantime. So we do have tanks coming out, which is good. We've got a whole bunch of triple M. We've got a reactor in the middle of nowhere. I don't know why he didn't move this barracks over to this one. Because he's got a reactor right there. So that's a little bit funny. Oh, battle in the middle. Hellions versus Lings, and it looks like the Lings just got him in a beautiful spot, and the Hellions just didn't run away quite in time. So, bunker in the middle of nowhere. That is uh, probably not going to last too long. Oh, this poor SCV man. He, he was, he was upset that his work was de being demolished for about a quarter of a second, and then he died. So, things did not go well for him. Banshee coming around. Unfortunately, Banshees do not regenerate health, but it is making sure that no base goes down here, no fast fourth base, then that's nice. And I mean, life's not going to trek a queen down here to chase this guy away for a very, very long time. But he is thinking about building a base there. Oh, is it going to get past the Banshee? I don't think so. Boom, down goes the worker. And that thing is not going to be going up anytime soon. So yeah, what, what do we got for the tech going on? We've got... Uh, Mr. Life, sorry, Mr. Polt, going for typical Triple M. He is building a second factory, which is quite interesting. He's obviously decided that tanks are going to be an integral part of this play, which I like to see. It actually, I mean, it actually looks like he's going for Marine Tank against the Zerg player. Marine Tank, usually... Oh, what did we have here? It looks like the Queen has just went uh, all nuts on this guy, and the worker somehow got around. Is it going to be able to cancel this? I don't think so. No, the Queen takes it out at the last second. But yeah, Marine Tank, I mean, I'm really, really not sure. It, I mean, he is facing off against Mutaling, and we do know that Marine Tank is a great Mutaling counter as of old. Um, but we've been seeing a whole lot more Triple M plus Widow Mine play against uh, Mutaling recently, just in the last few months since uh, Harvest Swarm came out. So, I don't know, man. It's, it's one of the very, very first marine tank sort of counters against Mutaling I've seen in Heart of the Swarm. So we'll see exactly how it goes, because it's going to be interesting. Here we go, the rock's starting to go down. The crate spread really, really is phenomenal for life. He can just zoom over here so quickly it's not even funny. He can maybe think of a flank, but reinforcements still going to be taking out these links and probably not going to be able to flank as well as he thought he might be. And Polt now has his eyes set on this fourth base. What do we got over here? A few lings, maybe going to be just morphed into bailings. But Holt, for the moment, deciding that the creep is definitely a very, very bad thing. And he needs to take it out ASAP. The Viking going nuts. Oh, come on. That Overlord was so close to being killed. Ah, uh, got distracted. The mute is actually killing the extractor. I don't know what he was thinking right there, but that was obviously not the right decision. And now he's just going to run away. Uh, literally, this, it's like the minute of Miss Micro right there. People making all sorts of mistakes, but regardless, 
going to be pushing in there. Ton of lings, ton of bane lings. These marines, man, are in a lot of trouble. They, uh, oh man, all that. Yeah, they get off the creep and they're okay, but I don't know if they can stay off the creep and still take this thing out. Maybe need to move a couple of tanks down there, see what they can do. But the problem is, there's creep highway all the way down there. If Polk commits to an attack, he can get flanked so badly by Ling. There we go, trying to do a nice bit of a split here, trying to stay alive. There's a Widow Mine on the ramp. Didn't really hit much though, there's another Widow Mine. And Polk, man, I don't think he's going to be throwing enough at life. And here we go, there is the flank from the back side. And Polk is suddenly surrounded on all sides and just being absolutely owned. So that's the major danger of going in this side. You get in there and suddenly you can hit, get hit around the back quite easily. This one may be a little bit safe. I mean, you have to go around there and get flanked in here. But at least then you can like load up into medevacs, fly off. With this thing, there's really no escape, man. Unless you go off to the side and then you've got to go all the way through here. It's not good news. Here we go. A bunch of Ling incursion coming in from life. He's decided he's got a bit of a lead and he wants to make use of it. Moving on in. A bunch of Ling. Attacking the front of it. And Polt. So far, not the... He's got a bit of stuff going on. The Ling... Sh She's just going to leave them for now. The Muters coming in. And we do see a bunch of Bailings hitting everything in sight right there. And the Muters currently not really being chased too much. There uh, are some Marines hitting them. Managed to get them out of the main base. But meanwhile, the Lings have taken down the Supply Depot line. And are going to work on the workers. But some reinforcements coming back in to finish those Lings off. Meanwhile, the Muters coming in to the main base once again. Looking to take out. Some uh, serious tech buildings. They've got one reactor, maybe going for another. Uh, the reactor on the starport. It's uh, not good to lose that one because it cuts your medevac production in half. I assume it's the only Stargate that Polt has. Yes, it is. Look at all these barracks he's got, man. That's way, way... That's a lot of barracks. Anyway, getting 3-3 three, three upgrades. Though, so that's very, very nice. What do we got for upgrades? We got 2-2 two, two for, uh, for Mr. Life. Where are his upgrades coming out? He's not doing 3-3 three, three at the moment. Uh... No, no, he's not. He's doing. He's going up to air. He's actually got air level two coming out right now. So, really focusing on these muters. But I mean, Holt seems pretty set up with the uh, muters, and he's starting to build a lot of widow mines. Oh, very, very nice hit, taking them all down to yellow health. But the bailings once again rolling in. Holt doing a fair job. I don't know, man. I mean, those bailing hits were quite nice, and Holt really, really getting knocked back. I don't know if he's got enough to deal with the muters right now. Almost, kind of, but the Lings come in and they're just going to wipe out more and more stuff here. So, Polt, I feel like he is on the edge of breaking right here. I feel like this endless swarm of uh, guys is on the edge of breaking him. But just as I say that, comes out with like 15 Marines, just boom, out of nowhere. The next wave of ones being produced and manages to hold off. But I just don't know. I mean, life had, had the momentum for a second there, but then Polt reproduced all of his Marines and got back into it so absolutely crazy right here absolutely crazy but of course um Polt is going to have 3-3 three, three. well far before uh far before life is going to have 3-3 three, three on anything so Polt could potentially pick up a very very nice advantage for that he is a little bit behind though if we have a look at the army um the LSA active forces where's the army where is the army it's not on here I always, I, don't, I guess I look at active forces. Let's have a look at the income, man. So life is 20 ahead, and he's also 20 uh, supply ahead. So the army is obviously the same. It's just the workers are 20 ahead. So that is it. Look at this, guys, man, just going nuts. Let that thing burn down and use this one. Oh, he's moving the starport over there. At least he's finally using their reactor. Where's the starport anyway? Oh, he's building it. Must those those muters must have taken it out, man. That is harsh right there. Gang, gang, get some missile turrets around. He's got some up the top side, but what well, he, he had some up the top side, excuse me. But now, you know, he's going in, and a lot of workers could go down. Watch that number, 60. No, he only went down to 57. So a uh, bunch of marines over there are going to be chasing these guys away. And suddenly, though, Polt going to be moving in, trying to get the fourth base, and. Uh, life not ready for it, so I think he's going to lose this. Managing to get the workers out of there, but this base is almost certainly going to go down. Meanwhile, retaliating, the muter's still going nuts, but she being chased by muters bit by bit, and Link's managed to get through the supply depot wall again. Somebody left the screen door open. What a mistake, and 
workers going down. So he's down to 38, 37, 34 workers from Pulp, man. The amount. I mean, look at this. Must be some links got in there as well. Absolutely crazy. But these guys taking out the base. They didn't really take many workers out there. And now they are paying the price as the muters start running in. Are flying in anyway and just start owning everything. The boost is on, but there's nowhere to run on this map because life is absolutely everywhere and he's owning everything. And there we go. The, the Marines just, ah, oh, just a little bit too late and the medevacs all go down. Look at these Widow Mines, man. All on cooldown, all getting taken out. Not good at all. And meanwhile, life has replaced his fourth base to this one over there. He's actually got 10 more drones mining it than he needs, so maybe she should put a bit over there. I don't know, seems like a good idea, but... Wow, just absolutely crazy. And Polt, I mean, he's he may be crippled right here. He's 40 workers down. I would not be surprised if he was crippled right here. I mean, he, he can try and use this to an advantage to... Uh, uh, <laughs> try and um, macro up a bigger army. He's got less workers, but I don't think he's going to be able to do it. I don't think he's got the uh, income. And he's running low on minerals anyway, so it's not like he's got a stockpile. And if you lose 50 workers, and you've got a massive stockpile, it could work to your advantage, because you can uh, build a bigger army than your opponent. But Holt has no such stockpile, and he is just going to get worn down from here on out by the uh, insane macro, the insane economy of life. So, there we go. It's going to happen. There's nothing that Holt is going to be able to do about it, so... Let's just see, though. I mean... I don't... I, I really... I really just don't see any way of Polt coming back from this. He just lost another 8 workers. He's down to 29, under 77. He can barely... Well, he's actually got, like, a 1,000 minerals, so... I don't know what he's doing with them all, but... He's, uh... He's not spending them on units at the moment. Oh, there we go. 11 marines. So that's something, but... He's, he's, he's not looking good at the moment. Not looking good at all. Oh, the Widow Mine. Oh, the Widow Mine. How many Widow... There's no kills, actually, on that guy. So, he's trying to act like he's badass, but he hasn't actually done anything this entire game. So, not good at all. And here we go. Bunch of Marines trying to fend off the Mutas, man. If life does take catastrophic losses to his Muta army, if he loses all of them through some sort of error or mistake or something like that, then he potentially could give uh, Polt the opening to get back into this game, but I honestly don't think it's going to happen. Um, I mean, he's looking to trap him in here, and oh man, he's done it! Life is trapped right there! I mean, if um, if Polt doesn't screw up here, there a lot of muters are going to go down. So, he's waiting for reinforcements there. Look at these guys, they're running in to save their muter colleagues. And hoping to pull the main force back, or maybe just move in on here and just destroy everything. And it looks like that's what the plan is going to be. So all these guys are going to get attacked by Lings. And suddenly the Muters are able to break free. And they'll probably destroy this base at the same time. So there we go. There's the GG. Beautiful stuff there by life. Constantly on the attack. Constantly doing lots of pressure. Um, just attacking everywhere at once. The Muters did a fantastic job at keeping them alive, at keeping them in the enemy base, constantly attacking things, but yet keeping them alive. And the Ling incursions, constant, constant, constant. And early game, the amazing creep spread to make sure that his bases were well defended, that uh, Polk could not get anywhere near his bases without just being swarmed by reinforcements running across that creep. Um, so life, really, really, really impressive game there. And yeah, congratulations to him for taking that out. And thank you very much for watching this game. This has been Harry Muppet. I hope you enjoyed this game. Stay tuned.